in this video, I'll be talking about the action of adrenaline. So I actually briefly mentioned this in a previous video about um, it, when I first started talking about chapter 14 about the uh, different types of hormones. So adrenaline is specifically a peptide hormone released by the adrenal medulla. And it's a peptide hormone, meaning that it is not lipid based. So it is hydrophilic. So um, if it's a hydrophilic hormone, it can't just simply pass through the membrane like the steroid hormones, uh, which can. So we need to have a think about is that if it can't actually go into the cell, how can it coordinate responses or signal the cell to do different things? And how can one single adrenaline molecule cause multiple different effects in the cell? So to start off with, uh, just to label some things, obviously that is the cell surface membrane and that is the adrenaline. Sometimes we call the adrenaline as the first messenger as well because it is the first chemical that brings the signal for the cell to do certain things. Now, because adrenaline is a peptide hormone, so they need to be received by or bind to a receptor on the cell surface membrane uh, to signal the cell that they're they're there. And usually, uh, the so that is the receptor, and the receptor is actually usually attached or is a, is a part of this particular uh, intrinsic protein, and that protein is called adenyl cyclase. Now, at the moment, when the adrenaline is not bound to it, it is inactive. But once the adrenaline fits into the uh, complementary specific receptor on the adenyl cyclase, it would activate the adenyl cyclase. And usually that comes in the form of um, changing a, the shape of the protein. And that's usually is the case for most proteins. So we activate it like that. Now, as the name implies, it's an adenyl cyclase. And the function of adenyl cyclase is that it will turn ATP into a different molecule which is called cyclic AMP. And this is what we call a second messenger because it is uh, the messenger inside or the chemical inside the cell that could transfer that message from adrenaline. Now, what this cyclic AMP or CAMP can do is that it will then be able to uh, bind to other enzymes or proteins inside the cell to cause different effects. So for example, here we've got an inactivated protein kinase. And what happens is that we will then be able to turn into an activated version. So the cyclic AMP, when they bind to the uh, protein kinase, it will activate that, and again, by causing a conformational change. Now, protein kinases are a family of proteins or enzymes that can do a very specific job. Protein kinases are enzymes that can phosphorylate other proteins or other enzymes to activate them. So the method of activation is by adding a phosphate group to them. So for example, here I've got an inactive enzyme. When the protein kinases are activated, they will then be able to react to that enzyme or react on that enzyme, causing them to become phosphorylated. So it will become something like this. So now this particular enzyme is now activated because it's been phosphorylated uh, and they can then go on to do various things. So for example, it could go on to activate other enzymes to do other things, or let's say if this is the end of the cascade, then one of the main fun one of the things that adrenaline could do is to convert glycogen to glucose inside the cell. And this is how they do it. So in the case of adrenaline, it's released during a fight or flight response or a stress response. So you'll be able to signal the body cells to make more glucose so that the cell can do more respiration for energy to respond to that stress signal. So to summarize, the action of adrenaline is this. So the adrenaline acts as the first messenger and it will be able to bind to a specific receptor on the cell surface membrane. That receptor is part of uh, an enzyme called adenyl cyclase. And once the adrenaline binds to it, it will activate adenyl cyclase and they will convert ATP to cyclic AMP, which acts as a second messenger. And the CAMP will then be able to bind to protein kinases and it will activate them to uh, phosphorylate and activate other enzymes inside the cell. And those activated enzymes can then go on to activate more enzymes or to do the actual action that they, uh, that they are supposed to do. So for example, converting glycogen to glucose. So this is the action of adrenaline. Now what we mean by an enzyme cascade is the fact that you can see one enzyme activates another enzyme and then it will activate another enzyme. 
So this is what we mean by cascade. But not only that, it's the point that how one single adrenaline is able to cause multiple proteins to be activated, not just within one single series, but even, let's say, but in the case of, let's say, an activated protein kinase, after phosphorylating that enzyme, it can then go and phosphorylate another enzyme, then causing a different branch, but doing the same function. So the enzyme cascade effect is where one hormone can cause multiple enzymes to be activated for various actions. So that is why one single adrenaline will be able to signal multiple enzymes in the cell to, let's say, all convert glycogen to glucose. So that's why the effect will take place a lot quicker. Whereas imagine if it's only able to make one single enzyme work, then you will need more or loads and loads of adrenaline to, uh, to, for that to work. And obviously that is non, that's inefficient and evolutionarily speaking, it's not ideal. So that's why the enzyme cascade effect is really, really important and really useful. In uh, It helps us see why the body is able to react so quickly to certain stress responses. And that is the action of adrenaline and the importance of the cascade effect. Mm -hmm.